Bino, it's a pleasure to have you back. Thank you. Great to be here. It's always a uh, very inspiring talk to you because you had talked about earlier the black swans. Uh, we always invest in technology that are really disruptive and that are scalable. There's always a challenge for a startup, but they always want this advice from you. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you look at the current scene, uh, whether it's online education or clean technology or you know mobile consumer space, uh, we always aspire to be unicorns, but not everybody could be a unicorn. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's a misnomer or not, but I you know, wanted you know, your take on that. Look, um, w when one is starting, it's hard to say what, whether it will be successful or not. If it's a short success, then there would be no risk. If there was no risk, everybody would do it, and if everybody was doing it, it wouldn't be unique or innovative. So innovation fundamentally involves risk-taking, and risk-taking means failure. Uh, I like to say my willingness to fail is what gives me the ability to succeed, and too many people just are not willing to fail so they don't try anything new. Uh, I like to say you should try and fail, but not fail to try. <laughs> because the people who fail to try, fail to take risk, fail to do something, attempt something new, are failing before they start. They just don't know it. Uh, when you talk about failure, this is an attribute, you know, credited to Silicon Valley, especially then it's, you know, being evangelized around the world. Uh, if you look at the example of India, you know, a lot of traction happening the last couple of years in the, you know, consumer space. Um, the willingness to fail is inherent, uh, and it is a taboo in some sense, but it's changing. When you look around beyond the borders of U.S., do you see that being emulated in some sense? Yeah. Um, look, failure isn't a good thing. You shouldn't try and fail. You should try and succeed, but allow yourself the ability, if something's risky and it doesn't work, to fail. Right? So failure is not a good thing but it's a necessary component of any innovative thing, because if it wasn't risky, you, it wouldn't be innovative. Uh, those just go together. So uh, the, the key to good failure is to have lots of different things you try. Each failure is small, but success is large. And those are the right kinds of experiments to try, the right kinds of risks to take, things to attempt. The two other points I wanted to, you know, ask you. One is disruption. When someone is starting out, uh, you know, you obviously want him to be a big disruptor in the space. Uh, how do you advise emerging entrepreneurs to look, focus on that? Whether you have the right, you know, disruption can shake the market, the space, and the next one will be then to scale. Yeah. It's very hard. Sometimes it's possible to predict something will be large. You know, if you're starting SpaceX, you know you're going to innovate space quite a bit. Though you still don't know how much, because now there's so many more innovative things than SpaceX happening, right. right? But most of the time, when you start something, you want to do something meaningful and get started, and maybe smaller, but you want to keep innovating, building on it one step at a time and hopefully it becomes much larger. Uh, you know, Amazon started with just books. Now it's everything. Right. Uh, if you look at Twitter or Facebook, when they started, they were relatively small things. Mark Zuckerberg was, was trying to connect everybody on the Harvard campus, right. not seven billion people on the planet. But he kept expanding his vision. So. Very often, when you start with an innovative idea, you don't know how big it is. In fact, most of, re most of the really innovative ideas have been very hard to predict what's a large opportunity or a small opportunity. Most people thought Airbnb would this be this very small, niche little opportunity that a few people would rent out their rooms and it'd be a nice little business. Now it's huge. People thought Uber would be this limo service business. It's now bigger than all limos, all taxis, and maybe replacing personal transportation. So it's not possible to always predict everything and where things may go. But just because you can't predict where things may go doesn't mean you shouldn't try. 
or you shouldn't start. Once you start and you stay creative and innovative and keep trying new things, uh, things expand. The other challenge with uh, innovation and scaling is building the right team around you. Sometimes as a you know, founder, co-founder, you're not the right person to lead a 100-person or a 1,000-person team moving forward. Uh, how do you advise entrepreneurs to take that challenge and be willing to bring other people to lead from the front? Well, it, building a team is the hardest thing for an entrepreneur to do because very often they don't know what they don't know, right? They, they know their area of specialty really well, but other areas they think they understand, but they don't. And every area is more complex and more nuanced than it appears to somebody. You know, to, I see so many entrepreneurs who think marketing is about a press release or an advertising campaign. It's not. It's much more nuanced and sophisticated than that. So team building is very important. Some entrepreneurs do a really good job of growing. Larry Page is an example. Mark Zuckerberg is an example of being better at new functions as they come up. Uh, in, and, and, and also, they've done a really good job of adding people who they can learn these new areas from. Uh, what I find is some po po entrepreneurs assume they know the answer, and that's very dangerous, and others know they don't know, and they hire the people who they can learn from. But they can still apply their entrepreneurial style in these new areas. Sometimes it makes sense for the entrepreneur to keep being CEO and driving the whole vision. Usually that's the best course. But some entrepreneurs can't think broadly enough to do that, and they can't grow fast enough. Uh, the other point is raising money. Uh, they always, uh, you know, the number one question for all entrepreneurs starting out is, how do I get the first round, the second round, how do I reach out to the Sand Hill group? people on Sand Hill Road. Uh, and we try every time to tell them, no, focus on the product, you know, go well, to market. It's the product, it's the team. You build a great team and money becomes really easy. Uh, finally, uh, exit is always, you know, another thing that is on the one. They, they keep exit as the focal point and then build the company around it. Uh, what is your advice on that? That's a stupid idea. Uh, exits are not predictable and exit isn't a goal. Uh, maybe some people have that goal. In fact, I never invest in people where exit is the goal. It's, the goal should be creating something. And exit, like an IPO or something, is just a milestone along the way. You know, Google didn't stop being influential or interesting after the, uh, when they had the IPO. That wasn't the goal. It was just one little extra thing along the way of building something is, that's really impactful. Uh, market is good, market is not good for startups. Uh, visionaries, like you say, it's always a good time as long as you know what you're trying to achieve. Yeah. yeah most markets are good times for starting companies. You know, uh, different things become harder or easier depending upon the time. When the market is booming like today, fundraising is much easier. But recruiting a team is very hard. When the market is terrible, recruiting teams becomes much easier. So. The risks change, what's hard changes, um, you know, some things become easier, some things become hard, but good entrepreneurs power through that. Like always, you know, thank you, I appreciate sure. it. Sure, thanks.